One of the burning questions in Washington, how could it have taken so long, so long to arrest the highest ranking CIA officer ever accused of selling out to the Russians? Aldrich James and his wife Maria are still, of course, the alleged spies, but there is no doubt in Washington tonight that this is an intelligent disaster. Here's ABC's Bob Zelnick. CIA Director James Woolsey faced an audience of congressmen anxious to know why it took nine years to figure out that Aldrich James was working for the KGB. It is a bit like playing uh, goalie on a hockey team in which you can never let a single shot get past you. Here's what went wrong. In 1985, another CIA agent, Edward Lee Howard, defected to Moscow. Intelligence sources say that when he arrived, the Soviets began executing several Russians who had been working for the CIA. For two years, the CIA assumed that Howard was the man identifying their Russian agents. If events occurred after you know that he no longer has access, then you assume that somebody else is doing the same thing. Something is wrong. It took seven more years to identify Ames as the double agent. By then, intelligence sources say Ames had told the KGB about as many as 10 Russians who were working for the CIA, including two embassy officials in Washington and a top KGB counterintelligence officer. All were killed. It is impossible to overestimate the amount of the, of the damage or the consequences or our own surprise. Meanwhile, Ames was allegedly spending more than $1.5 million in KGB money on a home, cars, and charge accounts, all on a $70,000 annual salary. The CIA knew nothing about this, as it does not require agents to file financial reports. Periodic lie detector tests are administered. Ames passed two such tests in 1986 and 91. By 1991, with the problem continuing, the CIA transferred several counterintelligence personnel, including Ames, to less sensitive units. Ames went to counter narcotics and gradually came under more intense suspicion. Yet during 1992 and 93, Ames continued to seek and receive classified information, including the names of Russian agents. And he continued to pass information to his Russian handlers, signaling each drop by marking a designated mailbox. Sources say the FBI allowed the exchanges to proceed until they had gathered enough evidence for a strong case against Ames. How many additional Russians paid with their lives for that delay is not yet known. Bob Zelnick, ABC News, Washington. This is David Ensor in Moscow, where Boris Yeltsin spoke for 45 minutes before his parliament today on economic reform and the need to crack down on crime, saying not a word about espionage. But Russian officials tell ABC News that high-level talks are underway on a U.S. demand that Russia withdraw two of its diplomats said to have handled the Ames case. The Russians are saying they will withdraw intelligence agents from their embassy in Washington only if CIA personnel are also withdrawn from the U.S. embassy here. U.S. officials are saying that is not acceptable. Russian newspapers today call the U.S. demands hypocrisy. Russia has no less right to spy on the U.S., said one leading daily, than America does to spy on Russia. As for the argument that one should not spy on a nation that is sending millions in aid, the Russians beg to differ. Israel has its spies in uh, Washington and in very sensitive places and I never heard that this really damaged the relations between uh, Israel and the United States. On Russian television there's much attention paid to the opulent lifestyle of the Ameses, their half million dollar house which was allegedly bought with Russian taxpayers money. Many Russians say President Yeltsin does not have the political legroom now to withdraw intelligence agents from Washington without getting something in return. They fear the U.S. may expel the agents anyway, prompting a tit-for-tat response and an uneasy chill in relations with Washington. David Ensor, ABC News, Moscow.